A question came up a while back through the Darktable unofficial group on Facebook about how to process images of grass. So I thought, okay, let's do a video on that. So let's go. Hi, and welcome to episode 89 of Understanding Darktable. Melanie Ann reached out to me through the Dark Table unofficial group. She had a couple of questions and one of them was processing grass. And she basically said she uses the color zones module, but she found that the colors would go weird in no time at all with even minor adjustments, which seemed a little odd to me. So I thought, okay, let's try and help her out. So I've grabbed a couple of images out of my archive and the first one is a picture of Tegan from our Autumn Colours shoot a couple of years ago. And as you can see we've got lots of nice green grass here being backlit by the sun with some autumn coloured leaves on the ground. And like you Melanie Ann, I would tend to start with the Colour Zones module. Now I guess it depends on what you're trying to achieve. Are you trying to take grass that's green and healthy and make it look dry? Or are you trying to take grass that looks a little bit dry and make it look a little bit more healthy? I'll try and cover both angles in this video. So the first thing I would do with an image like this, because there's a lot of green and yellow in the trees as well, I want to restrict any modifications we do just to the grass. So I would tend to go for a drawn and a parametric mask. So I would turn that on. I would come down and grab my path tool. I would control click for a hard corner and then I would just follow the line of the grass all the way through to there and then control click and control click and control click and then right click. And so now we've restricted our selected area to just this bottom section of the image. Now, obviously, yes, I've got Tegan's legs and boots in this image that we don't want. So the next step is to tackle the parametric mask and I would start with the hue. I know that I want the greens and the yellows and basically nothing else. So what I would do is bring these triangles in like so, turn the mask back on so I can see what I've got and what I haven't got. And we're pretty much in the ballpark. Let's just see what we can do here to get Tegan's legs out of that mask. That's looking pretty good. I think what we're seeing down her shin here is simply reflected light coming off the grass onto her legs. And it's obviously got a little bit of that, you know, gold and green in it. So no, that's too far. So we're pretty much there to begin with. I would then try tackling the chroma and just see at what point do we start losing our mask. It's about there. So we'll take that back up. Just taper that off a little bit. And right there at the bottom, that excludes a lot of the stuff we don't want. So that's really good. And I probably want to go something like that. Just so we get a little bit of a fall off that's not too abrupt. We've pretty much got all of our grass. We've got a little bit of the tree trunk there that we don't want. So what I could do there is control click to add some extra nodes. And I could do something like this if I was really, really concerned about it. To be honest, I'm not, but I'm just showing you what you could do. Just bring those down to try and exclude the tree trunk from the from the mask. Honestly, it's probably more hassle than it's worth. So right now 
we've got a pretty good selection inside our drawn and parametric mask of just the grass and nothing else. And so then let's assume you wanted to make the grass look greener. I would start with saturation and again we know that this is all in greens and yellows and pretty much no other part of the color spectrum. So on the saturation tab in the color zones module I would go to somewhere between the greens and the reds and lift the saturation and as you can see that has increased the color in the grass. Now how far you push it is entirely up to you. I think that looks absolutely awful, uh, but you might like that look and that's entirely your call. Uh, if you wanted to make it look a little bit more dead, you didn't want the grass looking too green and healthy, definitely try some desaturation, but also try a hue shift as well. So to do a hue shift, we would go over to the hue tab and you've probably noticed that you've got these diagonal color bars that run through the hue tab. And essentially what you would do is find the point along this center line that matches the tones you are trying to target. In this case, it's yellows and greens. So pretty much where this dot is, maybe a little bit to the right. So about there. And what hue you shift these colors toward will be determined by where you drag this node either up or down. So if you wanted to make the grass look more dry, you would want to introduce more oranges and reds to it because when grass is dry, it tends to go brown. So I would drag this down towards the reds and yeah, that's pretty much looking like dead grass. Now it looks a little incongruous because you've got all these lovely rich autumn colors in the leaves, but just trying to demonstrate a point here. That would be my approach if I was wanting to make it look dried out like it wasn't healthy grass. The other issue, of course, is that there's too much grass there for it to be looking dried out and, and nasty because generally as it dies off, it thins out. But that's just one approach. That would probably be my approach. Uh, and like I said, if you if you wanted to saturate it, you could certainly saturate it with the color zones module. To me, that's borderline pixel vomit. Um, reminds me of the early days of HDR when everyone was going completely overboard. But look, if that's the look that you're going for, that's probably the way I would tackle it. Let's have a look at one other image which is this image here of a lighthouse somewhere on the New South Wales coast. I'm sure I've got it in the tagging information. Yamba, there you go. Okay, so we've got this green grass here across the bottom quarter, fifth, whatever, of the photo. And there is a patch of the grass here that does look pretty dry. Now, maybe what you wanted to do was to fill that in and make it a little bit more consistent with the rest of the grass here. So what I would do in an instance like that is go for the retouch module and use a little bit of cloning and healing. So I would start with the brush and I would probably make that a little bit smaller. Remember, you can use your shift key to change the size of the fall off on the outside of that brush. So I would leave that about like so. And I will just paint across this dried out area like that. And then the source line, I will just move that down to where the grass is looking a bit greener and healthier. And that's a good start. There's still a little bit of grass over here that's looking a little bit dried out. So we'll grab the brush again and we'll just draw across that like so. And again, we'll drag the source line, actually maybe over here where it's a bit greener. And how does that look? 
Ooh, that's looking a little bit too obvious for my liking. So maybe we will just leave it there where it's not quite as green. Yeah, it's still not looking great, is it? Let's just get rid of that and try that all again. And maybe I'm just going to go like so. There we go. That looks a bit better. Obviously, there's still a couple of patches that look a little bit brown and you could spend as much time on this as you wanted to if that was your thing. And again, now that we've got a slightly more consistent looking grass, you can then decide how do you want to process this? Do you want to make it look dried out and dying or do you want to increase the saturation, play with the lightness maybe to make it look like healthy grass? Uh, either way, again, I, I think you were on the right track using the Color Zones module, Melanie Ann. So, we'll start with saturation. If we want to make it look dead and dry, we're going to target the yellows and the greens again. Oh, I should choose a drawn and parametric mask. In terms of a drawn mask, I would actually go with a gradient and I'd go something like that, and I would then use my mouse wheel to introduce a little bit of a curve. And then I'm gonna grab just the top node so I can just pivot that just a little bit like so. So that now follows the, the curve of the tree line there. And if we have a look at our mask, we'll see that it's the inversion of what we're actually after. So we will invert that mask so that we are affecting the grass and not everything but the grass. And I think the fall off there is pretty much where I want it. Yeah, yeah, I'll leave it there. I reckon that's, give us a look. Yeah, that's about it. Okay, so if we wanted to make this look like dry, dying grass, again, I would desaturate and I would shift the hue towards the reds and my grass is looking a lot less healthy now than it was before. Now, obviously, you can see where the fall off in that filter is happening along the tree line, so you could probably go in and tweak that fall off if you needed to. But generally, I think we've made our grass look pretty dull and uninspiring. If the intent was to go in the opposite direction, then let's just set the hue back to where it was and the saturation, we could increase that. Again, not my thing. I think it looks a bit fake. You could play with the lightness if you wanted to make it a little bit darker maybe to make it look a bit healthier. Again, you have to be careful just how far you go with this. So maybe that's what you're saying, that you know, it is easy to go overboard with the Color Zones module if you're not careful. I guess, yeah, that would be my approach to, you know, touching up grass in photographs. I think wherever there is other elements of the composition which don't have greens and yellows in them, then you would definitely want to use a parametric mask so that you could target just those hues and that will certainly exclude everything else from the filter so that you are only processing where the grass appears in your image. If you do have elements of the composition which also have yellows and greens in them, like in that first image of Tegan where, you know, skin tones are naturally going to have a bit of yellow in them, then you may need to get a little more finicky with the way you draw the drawn portion of the mask uh, so as to exclude skin tones. It's all a bit of trial and error and a lot of experience, I think, Melanie Ann. So I hope that this has been helpful in some regard. Um, yeah. Any further questions, please sing out. Uh, and that goes for everybody watching. Any questions, comments, feedback, please sing out down below. As I'm recording this, it's just prior to Easter and I am 
booked f for my third attempt to get to Western Australia to see my dad and my nan, so fingers crossed. Um, it's only four days away now, so hopefully as long as we don't have any COVID cases here in the next four days, I should be okay. So hopefully by the time you see this, I will have been to Western Australia and come back. Hopefully, fingers crossed. I feel like I've hit a bit of a funk with uh, this channel, and, and it's not that I want to stop. I don't want to stop. I just feel like I've run out of things to talk about. So if you feel like there are things I haven't covered that I should, or things that I need to redo because things have changed, like maybe I need to revisit denoising, I don't know, please throw me some ideas and I will endeavor to take those ideas on board and use them to create some new videos. All right, guys, I will leave it there. Have yourselves a great Easter if you celebrate that sort of thing. Enjoy the Easter eggs if you don't. And I will catch you in the next one. See ya.